This is a basis magnetic and cable charging box. It's really designed for the new Apple iPhone 15 with the USB cable because it has the magnetic attachment points on the back to snap it to the back of your phone. I received it from the Amazon Vine Voice review program to review for free. If you wanted to purchase this, it would cost you between $35 and $42 depending on your color choices. They have not paid me for this review and my opinions are my own. So in the box, you have here a little manual, and it looks like it may also include some stickers. The charging device itself, and it has a little piece of plastic over here. And there is writing on that, but I'm going to have to take it to a brighter light to read that writing. All right, on this little piece of plastic, there's a couple of disclaimers. One is that when you're charging a phone that's low and it does, does a lot of um, power output, it is normal for this power bank to get warm or hot. Um, another one is, hey, why is my charging slow? And they say, hey, the wireless charging through this is going to be slower than the cable charging. Um, so although it can attach and wirelessly charge, they strongly recommend you use the cable to charge to charge faster. Um, and the third one here is, why doesn't it stick very well? And they say, well, we strongly recommend you use one of our compatible cases or the Apple case that you know, makes these magnetic attachment points available so that it will stick well. And it says 30W on the back. It has the built-in USB-C cable. Um, it has a place here where you can plug this guy in um, just kind of to stow it, and it can also hang that way. Um, it, that plug there is not electrically active. Um, you're probably certainly not supposed to plug it into this plug here, which is the charging pass-through plug. Now, this cable here is supposed to be bi-directional, so you can charge it with this cable as well. All right, this manual looks long, but it has 15 different languages in it. So, you know, the English section is that long, and then you move into a different language. Um, it is painfully small to read, but I'll summarize the high points for you. Essentially, the cable and this port here are both input and output USB-C capable. Um, they can both go up to 30 watts output, although I suspect they can't do that at the same time. Um, and input-wise, they limit to 18 watts. So charging, you can't charge more than 18 watts into this guy. Um, the max voltage is 15 volts, so it will not do 20 volts USB-C power delivery, but it does do 15 volts at 2 amps, which gets you the 30 watts. Um, it'll also do 5 volts, 9 volts, 12 volts. Um, so at 12 and 15 volts, it can provide 30 watts. At 9 volts, it's only going to get up to 27 watts, and at 5 volts, it maxes out at uh, 15 watts. Now, when this is attached magnetically, it does do the inductive charging, and the inductive charging limit for the, the wireless charging is a 15 watt maximum, so they basically list 5, 7.5, 10, and 15 watts, and that will depend on the device you're charging is, is what it can accept but 15 watt maximum for charging inductively, 30 watt maximum with the cable. So even if you don't have a phone with a magnetic attachment point, the magnet makes it nice and easy to store in a file cabinet or refrigerator. You do want to make sure you don't get this near your credit cards if you still use mag stripes to demagnetize them. So this guy has two different USB-C ports. There's a port and the cable. Um, and they both claim to be input-output. And I tried with two different meters, plugging this thing in various different ways to chargers and loads and so forth. Um, did a lot of experimentation, and here's the summary. Any one of these works fine by itself. So if you plug this into something, it will charge at 18 watts, and it will um, deliver power at up to 28 point something watts. You know, so it's basically doing the rated 30 watt power output. Now, if you plug in both ports at the same time, like you plug a charger into this and then you plug this into your phone, it will negotiate both sides down to five volts and it will charge at a pretty low rate, like you know maybe 10 watts in, and it'll put out like six watts out. And so I do not recommend having both of these, the cable and the plug, attached at the same time. Um, essentially, just use this cable 
to plug it in just one thing. Either plug it into a phone you're charging or a laptop. It charged my laptop at 28 watts. Um, or plug it into a power source and charge it up. Or if you're having a cable from a power source, you know, just don't connect this guy to anything. Just plug the cable in and leave this guy to charge by itself because by itself it'll charge at 18 watts. If you try to do a pass-through charge to your phone while you're charging this guy, this guy goes down to 10 watts and your phone's getting 5 of those watts. Um, so it's probably more time effective to charge this guy fully up at 18 watts and then charge your phone at 30 watts. Now I don't have an iPhone 15 to test the wireless charging. It claims to be able to provide 15 watts inductively with the wireless charging. I expect it will be able to because it's accepting the 18 watts of charging that it said it would. It's providing 28 point something watts of output that it says it does. You know, that's close enough to 30 watt for me to give it to them. Um, so I'm going to say this guy meets its specifications for the charging speed both in and out. Um, it never claims to be able to do USB pass-through. It sort of does at 5 volts, but not super great. Um, so basically, consider this a one-port charger. So if you plug two devices in to be charged, it downgrades to 5 volts output. So this guy here is getting 5 volts at 2.8 watts, so it's getting almost 15 watts. This guy over here is getting 5 volts at the remaining like 0.67 watts. Um, and so basically this, this is getting, you know, about 3 watts to charge, and this guy's getting about 15. So basically it splits the 18 watts that it can do at 5 volts, so basically 5 volts at 3 amps. It's splitting across both outputs. Really, I would, I think, you know, never plug in more than one device at a time, you know, so either plug this in into a charger or plug it into one device to charge and it works really well in that configuration. Now I do not have an iPhone 15 to test wirelessly charging something and at the same time also charging via the USB power delivery port. That may work reasonably well if those two subsystems are different but these two USB USB-C ports, um, the cable and the port, um, if you try to use both of them, they both drop down to 5 volts, and then it just shares 3 amps through both of them. So this guy has four lights. There's three battery charge lights. So you might think, hey, there's four lights here. That's how much you know, charge it has. Well, no. So that first light is an indicator of wireless charging, and when you push the button on the side to start the wireless charging, if it turns orange here, it means, hey, I haven't found anything to wirelessly charge. So I'm going to use this guy to charge my laptop until it goes all the way down, no lights over here. Um, then we will charge it back up and see how much power it takes to charge back up. So if you're conveniently lucky enough to have a piece of metal right where you want to put this thing, that little magnet on it is a nice, easy way to attach this in a specific location. Okay, this guy has stopped charging my laptop. We have a single blinking light when we test for power. So we are going to plug it in and we will see how much power it takes to recharge it. Okay, it's charging at 12 volts, 1.66 amps. That is 19.9 watts. And the watt hour meter is zeroed out and we will see what it is when it's finished charging. All right, this guy is charged up and it took 43 watt hours. All right, this says it has a 10 amp hour battery inside at a 3.7 volts, that'd be 37 watt hours. So I think, you know, taking 43 watt hours to recharge a 37 watt hour battery sounds about right with the losses due to charging and voltage conversion. Um, so I'm going to say this guy meets its specifications. Um, the USB-C input does 18 watts in, the USB-C output does 30 watts out. Um, you know, as, as long as you're only plugging in one thing at a time, it works just fine according to its specifications. I've not been able to test the wireless inductive charging because I don't have a device that'll charge off of that, but I expect it will work just as fine. Um, the battery capacity is what it claims. So, you know, if you're looking for something like this that magnetically attaches to your phone or somewhere else, um, has a cable built in for 30 watt charging, I think this guy's going to work well for you.